This is Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma, Alabama, a national historic landmark since 1982. This church served as the makeshift office for Martin Luther King Jr. and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference during the Selma Campaign of 1965. The Selma Campaign was primarily organized to fight the racially motivated suppression of voting rights in Alabama and the American South. Brown Chapel AME Church was also the starting point for the historic Selma to Montgomery marches. The Selma to Montgomery marches were three demonstrations held during March of 1965. They were organized as nonviolent protests to increase awareness of racial injustice and the voter rights movement in Alabama. The basic concept was to walk the 54 miles from here at Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma to the Capitol building in Montgomery, increasing protester numbers and media coverage along the way. Don't give up, but in one great outpouring with the gentle signs and the glad thunders of the ages, all of us can begin to sing glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. We're marching, we're marching up to Zion. We're marching, we're marching up to Zion. We're marching, we're marching up to Zion. Oh, the first of the three marches began on March 7th, 1965. This turned into the infamous Bloody Sunday when armed police attacked marchers with billy clubs and tear gas as they were attempting to cross the Alabama River here at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. The bridge itself has an infamous namesake. Edmund Winston Pettus, a former Confederate general, U.S. Senator, and Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. Now, the demonstrators were ultimately blocked and forced to return to the Brown Chapel AME Church. But it was these images that put the Selma campaign on the national map. The second march took place on March 9th, just two days later. Again, the demonstration met with police resistance here on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. This time, Martin Luther King Jr. had joined the protesters. He led the group to obey a federal injunction against the march, and they turned around on the bridge, returning to the Brown Chapel AME Church to await a legal decision. This march became known as Turnaround Tuesday. That night, a key protester and visiting minister from Boston named James Reeb was murdered in Selma. Between the events of Bloody Sunday and the murder of Minister Reeb, Selma was making national headlines. Nearly two weeks later, with the support of the media and the courts, a third march left Brown Chapel AME Church and successfully crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge to start the four-day walk to Montgomery. The third march followed U.S. Route 80 between Selma and Montgomery. U.S. 80 is an east-west, United States-numbered highway, much of which was once part of the auto trail known as the Dixie Overland Highway. The zero in the route number indicates that this was originally a cross-country route from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. However, the entire segment west of Dallas, Texas, has now been decommissioned. In 1996, the National Park Service designated this portion of Route 80 as the Selma to Montgomery National Voting Rights Trail. There's an information center, and they've even marked various sites used as campgrounds during the 1965 marches. Since this is drive through history, of course, we're going to drive the Selma to Montgomery National Voting Rights Trail. Take me back to the river, wash away my sin. It was a march into the unknown, and tensions were at an all-time high. The Alabama governor, a Southern Democrat named George Wallace, well known for his segregationist views, had no intention of acquiescing to the demands of the marchers. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. <laughs> And we hope to see 
the greatest witness for freedom that has ever taken place on the steps of the capital of any state in the South. It was here at the Alabama State Capitol that the third Selma to Montgomery march finally ended on March 25th, 1965. Approximately 25,000 protesters gathered at the foot of the Capitol steps here on Dexter Avenue. Martin Luther King Jr. and a number of other prominent activists led the group in an attempt to meet with Governor George Wallace and give him a petition requesting an end to racial injustice and the suppression of voting rights in Alabama. In part, the petition said, we have come not only five days and 50 miles, but we have come from three centuries of suffering and hardship. We have come to you, the governor of Alabama, to declare that we must have our freedom now. We must have the right to vote. We must have equal protection of the law and an end to police brutality. They were denied entry, but Dr. King delivered one of his impassioned speeches at the base of the Capitol building steps. We, we are, are not about, about to, to turn, turn around. around. Yes, sir. We are on the move now. Yes, sir. Yes, we're on the move and no wave of racism can stop us. Yes, sir. Although the meeting never happened and the petition was never delivered to the governor, the media awareness was huge, especially in light of the terrible Bloody Sunday events a couple of weeks earlier. Collectively, the Selma to Montgomery marches had a major role in pushing the passage of the U.S. Voting Rights Act of 1965 just a few months later. These steps at the Alabama State Capitol remain as they were in 1965, although repairs have been made during the 1992 renovation of the building. These steps have continued to be the rallying point for civil demonstrations over the years. Memorial Selma to Montgomery marches have ended here at these steps on several occasions since 1965. 